need for the rest of the class today. the staff paper with the seat position on it, please. And we will play in uh, two different articulation. Uh, last week we discussed legato, which is expressed by the slur marking, when we have a long slur over um, the curved line over the keys or the notes. We're going to play the keys legato or connected. And Second, we will play staccato, and that was the sound when we played, um, when we were lifting our fingers up off the keys to play the keys short, and that was expressed with a dot underneath the note. Okay, so let's go to start a C position. First time we'll play legato all the way through, and the second time we'll play staccato all the way through. No, we're doing the um, the salmon paper oh. with the exercise. Okay, so I can take this time to write on write the. Um, do you have it? Do you have it? Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and play in C position, where your fifth finger is on C and your first finger of the right hand is on C. One, two, ready on C. C. Same note. When we see a slur that is connecting the same note, 
It's called a tie. And essentially, we need to go ahead and hold through the second note. So for example, we have a two count note and a two count note. When I play this G, the treble G, I will go ahead and play through the second G, so I will hold the G for four counts. So we have two different curved lines. First one is a slur, when we have several notes underneath, or even two notes that are different, that is going to be a slur. But if it's connecting the same two notes, then it's going to be a tie, and we're going to go ahead and hold through that key. We'll be looking at that later on in one of our uh, music. Okay. Right now, I would like you to um, ask me if you have any questions regarding Twinkling Planets or basketball, anything that we tried last week, Planetarium, in case you wanted to play that as a solo or a duet. Otherwise, we will go to um, Alouette. Can we go on to Alouette? Sure. Okay. Do you have any questions in Alouette? Remember that we will be playing six lines total because after we go all the way to the end, we're going to go back to the top to repeat the first two lines of the piece. Okay, we have combination of three notes, um, three count notes, one count notes, two count notes, and also four count notes. Let's go ahead and give this a shot, starting on middle C, one on middle C of the right hand. And you'll notice that at the very end of the first line, we have number three finger on top of the F, which is going to be a G. Excellent. One, two, ready on C. C, two, three.
So sometimes you'll notice that the dot is a little confusing. When the dot is underneath the key, usually for a quarter note um, or note that's filled in, that's going to mean staccato. When a note, when the dot is next to a note, see how that looks a little bit different? It has another meaning. We just have to be careful that we make that distinction uh, quickly before we play the music. Let's go ahead to Allegro. We played this last time. And to give you some reminders, we have um, the left hand that's held all the way through the four counts. As your right hand is playing, right, at the beginning of both lines. And then at the end of each line, we're going to have seconds, intervals of seconds. Otherwise, we're going to be dealing with thirds. Right now, I would like you to put your headphones in and work on this piece for a little bit uh, just to refresh your memory on how this works. And let me know if you have any questions, please.
measure on the E, C, A, A, C, B, C. One, two, ready, begin. And then ending on a C. Right, yeah, good, thank you. Let's go ahead and start EJ. One, two, ready, begin. to uh, look through Boogie and Thirst. This piece will be played a little bit faster than Allegro, uh, performance tempo. But as you observe, the first two lines, again, start the same way in thirds. And actually, they are repeating. So let's first go ahead and find our hand position, understanding that our landmark notes, I'll draw it here for you just as a little review. Our landmark note, G is uh, um, on the second line from the bottom, and our landmark note F is on the second line from the top, and our C is right in the middle. Okay, so let's try to discover together uh, which uh, note the left hand begins on. E. Good, go the other way instead. You went uh, G. Yes, exactly. You went down the alphabet and you went to go up. Now, for the right hand, it looks like it's closest to C, but it's right above C. D. D. Exactly. Okay. So you'll notice also that you're, uh, once you get in that position, your thumbs will have to kind of share little C, right? And looks like at the very beginning your fourth finger, second finger will be played in the left hand and then your second finger of the right hand will respond and then end with the fourth finger. So you're using your ring fingers of each hand and your pointers of each hand going up. Let's go ahead and try the first two measures together. One, two, ready, begin. So your middle C will be somewhat shared by the thumb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of to exactly that's a really good position. Mm -hmm. So you'll use four, two, two, four. Exactly. Uh -huh. One, two, ready on G, G, B, D, F. Right. This is a this is not too easy. Right on the right hand. So let's go ahead and play G together. G with the fourth finger. Your ring finger. Good. And then thirds up. Good. So you had your ring finger, your pointer. Respond with your pointer, second finger. And then thirds up from there. Oh. Exactly. And then you'll have that two times. Let's play that, uh, those two measures. One, two, ready, begin. G, B, D, F, G, B, D, F. Now, right hand only. Let's go ahead and read finger number three. Good. And then go up to your landmark new G. Back to finger number three. And these are all thirds. Good. Repeat that measure. Right here. 
there's still more. There she is. Hi. Hey, I heard you. <laughs> so they were on headphones. <laughs> You're practicing boogie in thirds? Okay. I feel that that could really help you with straightening out your arms because it felt a little bit, uh, yeah. yeah, a little bit, how do you Lost say? Lost <laughs> Yeah, like a dinosaur. Um, so if you could sit back and maybe have a little bit of flexibility in your arms, yeah. yeah, that just looks more comfortable. responding. But actually, um, when mine is cut off, so I'm wondering if someone could trade with me to play. EJ, do you think you could trade with me just music? Because my duet part is. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah that's the problem. Thank you. How are you doing, going? Getting warmed up? Yeah. <laughs> Good. I want to play as many duets as possible so you have more options um, when you are deciding which piece you would like mm. to play. Okay, put your hand position. One, two, ready, begin. Play with F and finish off 
the keys. Okay, I'll show you that one more time. C, D, E, thumb goes under, F, G, A, B, C. Now when I return, I'm going to use the same fingers. That means I need to play with all five fingers first. Through F, go over. I don't need to do this because my fingers are able to reach over to E, D, C. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and play that together. I'll put my hands up here in case you want to follow me. Ready? On C. C, D, E, under. For the first time, go this way and come back up. So to demonstrate for you, same idea with different keys, uh, different order of keys. C, B, A, go under with the thumb, G, F, E, D, C. Coming back up, use all five fingers. Go over with three, two, one. Okay, we're going to start on the middle C with the thumb also. One, two. Ready? Begin. C, B, A, under G, F, E, D, C. Come back up. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So you just accomplished hand separate, both thumbs start on C for step one. Step two, contrary motion, hands together. One, two, Three, under. Two, three, four, five. Four, three, two, one. Over. Three, two, one. You can take this at your own pace. Okay, so you can go ahead and start. Make sure your keyboard is not too loud so um, you can all hear yourselves. <coughs>
write these finger numbers down somewhere right in front of you because sometimes uh, for beginners learning the scale, it's always helpful to see the keys with what finger it lines up. So if you have something like this right in front of you, instead of trying to do it all by memory power, it's um, sometimes helpful. So we did number one very well, number two very well. So that's the next thing that you would need to do in order to play um, a parallel motion C major scale. on G with hands together. And since you already know G major has an F sharp. Good, let's go ahead and start that one more time. Um, and let's go ahead and turn it up. 
Ready on C? C, C, A, C, D, C, A, 2, A, G, 2, 3, A, G, 2, 3, C, C, A, C, D, C, and hold to go down, G, 2, up, down, down, 2, 3, 4, now we're going to start on that F, F, and then third up, A, always works uh, for my like older students but have you all played um, DDR dance dance revolution yeah. yeah do you know what it is yeah okay as long as you know for my little kids they have no idea what it is so I just have to say like guitar hero or something um, and you know how when you're like doing DDR or guitar hero you always have to look ahead or else you'll always be late it's kind of like the same idea when you are reading a piece of music although all of it is already in front of you we want to make sure that we are looking ahead, so at least, you know, for Guitar Hero, you know when blue is going to come up when it's that time, and you're not always just trying to catch up, okay? So let's have that kind of mindset and keep your eyes moving. We'll play that one more time all the way through. By the way, are there any questions as you were reading? Any clarification you need as you were playing? We're good? One, two, ready, begin. Sing, sing, A, C, D, C, A. Repeat that note. A and go down. Two, three, four. A and go down. Three, four. Back to C, C, A, C, D, C, A. Down. G, two, A, G, F, two, three. Repeat that F, F. And back thirds, thirds, three, two, three, four, D, D, F, D, C, two, three, same C, 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 A, C, good, A, two, G, G, A, F, two, three, four, very good reading on the last line. Uh, right now, I want to give you maybe like a minute to work out something in there that you needed to clarify on your own. So plug in your keyboards real quick and uh, we'll play it as a duet. This is a very, very fun duet to work on. One thing I noticed, mm -hmm. uh, you were using your second, you were in the right position, but right here, go ahead and use a thumb, it'll just naturally be on the D. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys know you use a second finger. About 20 more seconds and please take out Carousel Melody.
repertoire that you'll notice um, in popular music or sheet music, anything like that. Um, the melody is usually in the right hand. Melody meaning the part that we're singing with and the accompaniment, the background music, background rhythm, background sound is usually with the left hand. But in this case with carousel melody, it's the opposite where the right hand is the background and the left hand is the melody, carousel melody in this situation. We have a lot of dotted half notes, the three count notes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. A lot of dotted half notes. Here's the time that I mentioned to you earlier in the class. Let's first figure out which key this is right above the F. It's going to be our bass G. We're going to hold this G for six counts total because we have that curved line connecting the two G's. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play just the left hand and I would like you to listen how that works with um, the three, four time. One, two, three, go down. One, two, three, go down. One, two, down again. Up to C, second finger. Two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just go ahead and place our left hand on that middle C. Thumb on middle C and we'll play just the left hand. Please make sure your keyboards are unplugged and that your keyboard is up so we can all hear each other. Okay. Thank you. Middle C with the thumb. One, ready, begin. C, two, three. B, two, three. A, two, three. G, up to C. B, two, three. A, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold on right there. We are going to start the same way with the second finger. So if you need to, with your pencil, go ahead and write two underneath measure nine, where you're going to start on that B. Okay, sometimes finger numbers are really, really helpful. In this case, um, I recommend it because it's B's and C's are so close to each other. Okay, let's go ahead and start on that third line with the second finger on B, underneath the C. One, ready, begin. B, two, three. A, two, keep going down. G, back up and reach the C. B, A, G, C, two. Now thirds down. A, G, A, C, two, three, four, five, six. Nicely done. Not going, uh, not going to play that again. Uh, for the second C. Let's go ahead and try that and I'm going to play the right hand to your left hand melody. One, ready, begin. C, two, three, B, two, three, A, two, three, G, A, up to C, B, two, three, A, two, three. Now six count on this G, two, three, four, five, six, second finger. necessarily in the correct place. I'll redraw them. We're going to start with this and okay so notice that we have G's on each clump. The first one we have G at the top and E at the bottom with finger number one and three. Next we're going to have G still at the top and F on the lower note. So G is kept with the three, and you're going to play F with the second finger. 
Kind of feel out what that feels like uh, with the right hand. And then once you've got that, I will go ahead and ask you to try that on your own uh, during the week. But I do want to point out that at the very last line, we have a combination, a mixture of both. We have the thirds, seconds, and back on the thirds. Okay? Up to that point, each line is going to uh, be either thirds or second. But at the very end, we have um, differences going on. Okay? I do need to move on. Um, to guide note strategy with you. Oh, this is a lovely piece. Maybe I'll give you some time to practice it as I write the assignment down. We have three landmark notes so far. I want to give you another landmark note since we're coming to an end of our classes. This landmark note <clears throat> represents the C below the middle C. Okay. And since I think you could all conceptualize this pretty easily, I'll just go ahead and show you. It's on the second space right here. From the top, the second space from the top is also going to be C. So if you want to make yourself a note for future reference, um, you can go ahead and do so. So we have a C on the second space from the top. A C right in the middle of the piano, and a C second space from the bottom. And that might give you um, a little trick to figure out where your notes are. And then we have G on the treble clef, and then F on that second line. Okay. So right now, let's go ahead and go through uh, this this sheet. Okay. We're going to go through those steps that I worked with you a couple weeks ago, um, but with not really formally. I would like you to decide, okay, what's the closest guide note um, to the note that you see? And then we'll go through this kind of on your own pace, and I'll help you out if you need a pencil. Together, but on the back is just reinforcement of what you just did on the front, but in a more complicated way. It's not as a cut and dry as the guide note strategy sheet is. Um, on the back, there's some instructions that you could help yourself to read a little bit quicker and to reinforce that area of um, your piano study. Just to reinforce what you just did with the bass C, we'll just do jump shots as our last piece for today. Uh, it has a one at the top. Um, and we're actually going to play the bass notes, the bass C, 
that you just um, identified. I'll just show you what your hands will look like. Um, obviously, we're dealing with the left hand for this entire piece because you'll notice that all of the notes will be given for the bass clap. Okay? I'm going to just spread out my hands to show you what that reach is going to look like going from C, 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 2. That's the very first measure. Could you all show me that span between the C's in your left hand? And so it's going to feel like this. You need to find the C with your fifth